Hey everybody, it's Tony with Big T Bariatric and I'm back at you with another video. Today it is Friday, amen, hallelujah, January 20th. I hope you're having a great day so far. I just woke up and I'm like, okay, I got a lot of stuff to do. Should I even make a video? Okay, I guess I'll make one. Um, so before I get started here, there are two things I want to say. First, if you guys are looking for another YouTube channel to watch, to keep up with somebody's weight loss journey, I highly recommend the channel Valerie and Josh. They're two new friends of mine that I made through my channel, and they, they're also a part of my Discord. Um, and they're really awesome. Together, they're a couple, and they lost over 345 pounds, according to one of their videos. And so they're doing really awesome, and, and their videos are really interesting, how they're eating. They show their exercises and stuff like that. So if you want to support another couple who's going through the same process I am, who's been losing a lot of weight and getting healthy, please follow Valerie and Josh. Also, if you could do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button down below. We are so close to hitting that 2,000 subscriber mark. I greatly appreciate it. Also, leave a like, leave a comment. That would be awesome. And if you've watched any of my past videos, I, I've been noticing a click through my headphones. Um, I, I don't notice it while I'm doing it, but when I watch it, um, there, there's a clicking noise sometimes. I, I'm trying to remedy that, so hopefully there's no click in this one. And we'll see how it goes but what I want to react to today is a clip from 1,000 pound best friends and it's Vanessa's sister is a bad influence and so we all know what enabling is alike with is like within the obesity community we've talked about it many times and so in this episode Vanessa becomes upset with her sister Jackie brings over fast food and shares it with her son Jacob who weighs over 490 pounds so this should be an enabling mess all right let's get started right now I didn't even know that I could live my life without having the task of Take looking of after you and and stuff you know so is you going to clean Jacob's room uh no son of a <laughs> see that's the one thing I, I lost the weight and I also lost all the people that do yeah. for me yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of pausing because it is TLC. But yeah, when when you're big, one of the benefits of being big is you get everybody doing everything for you. And that's eventually what burns bridges because you're not doing your thing. You're not getting up and exercising. You're not losing weight. And so everybody else is doing everything for you, cooking, cleaning, shopping, everything for you. And you know, she's just kind of joking around that, hey, you know, now that I've been losing all this weight, now I now I can do my own stuff. You know, it's it's a good feeling to be able to get up again and do your do the things again. But I think a lot of people want to stay fat because then they get to stay lazy and they don't have to do things. In one of the videos uh, where Nick Akato went to the heart attack grill, that's one of the things Dr. John was talking about. He says. One of the positives of obesity is you have everything, you have everybody doing everything for you. You don't have to do anything. You could just sit back, relax, lay in your bed, and be sedentary. What an amazing life, right? Living together was unhealthy because I did everything for her. I did the laundry, the housekeeping. Now she has to do those things on her own, and she's able to. And that's really, really a big achievement for her. Yeah, it's good that her sister is encouraging her here. Um, yeah, now you're able to move out and be on your own. Now you're able to take care of yourself. Now you're able to do your own chores. That is an amazing thing. As I was saying before, I've started being able to do that. I've been taking out the trash. I've been doing, doing the dishes. I've been cooking for myself. Um, <clears throat> just doing a lot more stuff within the house. Keeping my own room clean. Keeping my bathroom clean. Like... I enjoy doing it now because it's like being bedridden for so many years and not able to do all those things was horrid. It was horrid. As much as you can kind of get used to being taken care of, it's like I don't want people taking care of me that way. I want to be able to take care of myself now, and, and that's where I'm at. So I'm very, very excited about the future when I can do a lot more things. There's a lot more things that I want to learn how to do too. Like I'd love to learn how to smoke my own meat, so I want to get a meat smoker. Um, you know, just being able to walk around the block and, and exercise and stand on my feet a, a lot longer than I can now. And, you know, it's I'm still sort of shaping myself into that mold where I'm 
fully able to be on my feet as long as I want to. So there's still a limit, but that limit is stretching out. It's growing as I gain, gain more mobility. So now, are you doing all right? I'm doing good, you know. Are you still playing your games and stuff? And... Yeah, that's what you don't do. When you go to somebody's house and they've had weight loss surgery and they have a 490-pound son there, you don't go there and eat fast food in front of them and it looks like she's offering him a fry. Like, that's enabling to a T right there. Why would you do that? It's like going to a cocaine addict's house and waving a bag in front of them like, hey, I know you went to rehab and I know you're doing all this hard work, but come on, we can just have one. We can party a little bit, right? Yeah, same thing. That's good. Yeah. You've been doing everything? Same? Yeah, just working all the time and that's about it. What the heck? I wonder if she's a feeder, a feeder type. I mean, she's not sexually attracted to what I would assume is her nephew or her sister who's big. But I don't know. Maybe she feels a certain type of way about her sister and her nephew being big. And she's sort of losing her identity or connection with them now that they are working on losing weight. Or maybe she wants to be the favorite aunt by offering him this milkshake or whatever. Um, that's the psychological issue that a lot of people who are feeders or enablers have. Like, they've been used to a certain lifestyle. And it can be hard to break. I mean, just last night I was thinking about making a YouTube short on this. But I'll just post it right here, I guess. And I might still do it later. I don't know. But, um, you know, last night... My mom had some ice cream. She bought some chocolate ice cream when she went to the store, when we went to the store a couple of days ago. And I was frustrated that she bought it because we don't need that stuff in the house. She doesn't need it, even though she's not overweight. I don't need it, but whatever. She bought some ice cream. And, uh, <laughs> and so she got a bowl of it last night. And so I made a joke with her. Hey, hey, can I sniff it? Can I sniff your ice cream? Because there's that meme uh, of that person who, who's on a diet and so that they like, you know, eat it or they sniff it an Oreo and then they eat an apple and then they sniff the Oreo and then they eat the apple. So I was just making a joke with her. She goes, it's OK. You can have a spoonful. And I was like, sometimes enabling is, is a mindless thing. You don't even really think about it. You don't think about what you're doing or what you're saying, because earlier that day, yesterday, I just had a conversation with her about how I need to go strict that I can't indulge anymore i can't have a little bit of ice cream i can't have fried foods i can't go to mcdonald's i can't have the steak bagel i can't do any of these things anymore that i need to be strict this month or and beyond you know it's not just this month but i have a goal i'm trying to reach and so it was only a few hours later that she's like oh it's okay to have a bite of ice cream go ahead it's like, yeah, that one bite would have turned into several bites. That full sugar, once it hit my brain and made me feel good, like I was going to go back for more. And so sometimes you don't even realize that you're enabling somebody, that you're tempting them. Of course, I decided not to because I actually felt kind of frustrated that, that she told me that. Um, but I don't blame her as much because, again, it was sort of a mindless thing. Like, you know, hey, a bite of ice cream isn't going to do no harm. But what she didn't know is that that one bite probably could have turned into several bites. Or, okay, I could have a small bowl. That's okay. And that's where you start uh, giving in to your temptation. When someone says, oh, a bite's not going to kill you. Well, what does that bite turn into? I definitely didn't need that sugar hit. What? Why does he got that? Why is he drinking a milkshake? It's just a milkshake, Vanessa. Jackie, why are you bringing that around? That's a good point. Why are you bringing that around? You have no right to bring that to her house. Seriously. Like, this is frustrating. Again, you go to an addict's house and you bring their drug of choice to them. And you, there's a 490-pound kid there. And you give him a milkshake, you give him some fries. That's just horrible. That's horrible. This is my lunch. I, I don't know, go but... this by myself. I'm just sharing it with them. 
bringing fat foods into this house is like bringing a bottle of liquor to an AA meet. Yeah, exactly what I was saying. Except my example is cocaine, but bringing a bottle of liquor to an AA meeting, yeah, you, you just don't do it. Even if it's your own lunch. It's like, look at what I can have. Look at what I can have. It's just temptation to the ninth degree. It's horrible. And the fact that you're going to argue with her over it, knowing that they have an addiction to food, knowing that they're trying to get healthy, it just shows what kind of a crap person you are. You care more about your own selfish desires, your own lunch or whatever. If you wanted lunch, you probably could have asked your sister, hey, I'm coming over. What do you want for lunch? Do you want a sandwich? Do you want me to get you a salad? Something. You didn't have to bring a burger and fries and a milkshake over to someone who's recovering from their obesity and had weight loss surgery and trying to get their, their kid healthy. Okay, this is something you don't do. But you don't know, this boy weighs 490 damn pounds. He got one damn milkshake and still his weight. No. No. <laughs> I've been learning that the hard way. Like, your weight loss is dramatically slowed once you start introducing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And before you know it, you're back to your old eating habits. If you're going to diet, you need to diet. You, you need to focus on a complete lifestyle change and cut those foods out of your diet completely. I used to be one, and I've even said it on this channel. So I've been growing and, and learning more lately. But just that little bit of cheat meal, that little bit of ice cream, that little bit of whatever, is going to sabotage your diet. And if you give in once, you're going to say, oh, well, twice ain't going to be a big deal. What about three times? That's not going to kill my diet. That's just three meals. That's just three days out of a 30-day month. But it has a dramatic impact on your body because your body is getting into a health mode. It's losing weight. It, it takes time to you know, get that weight off. And then if you start introducing fat foods again after you've been dieting, after you've been doing well, like it completely switches your body's role and it starts storing glycogen again. It spikes your blood sugar. You start gaining weight again. And it has a dramatic effect on, on your body. And so flip-flopping back and forth between eating healthy, okay, I'm going to eat some fat and crap. Eating healthy, I'm going to have some sugar. I'm going to have some milkshake and some fries. Eating healthy and just flipping and flopping, like that's not good for your body. Oh, no, 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 no. I understand my mom being, you know, upset and everything like that, but it's just a milkshake, and I don't see why she's so overly uh, angry. That That's a fat person's take, right? It's just a milkshake. Why are you being angry? I can have a milkshake. Well, if you're trying to lose weight and be healthy, like, dude, you're 490 pounds. You got to do better than that. You got to think health. You got to think happiness. Because if he gets any bigger, and he's already a young dude, he could be bigger than me in the next few years. Like he needs to start thinking about a lifestyle change. He's been probably enabled by his mom, who was super healthy. Like They ate the same foods together, and it was not healthy, it was not clean, it was not good. So they gained weight together. And so now that she had weight loss surgery, she's changing. He's probably frustrated with it because he has to eat healthy and clean, and she's trying to get him to lose weight. And then you got the aunt who comes over and says, okay, let me enable you. Let me give you a milkshake. Let me give you some of my fries. And it's like, oh, man, I missed that. I've been struggling so much living here with my mom and eating all this healthy food. I don't like the never mom and Jackie fight because it's just, you know, annoying and useless, especially if I'm in the middle of it. This baby has got to do some more healthier eating. You offered him a milkshake and a goddamn fry. Yeah. Exactly, Vanessa. He's got to do better. He's got to do better to save his life. Well, milkshakes are good. Milkshakes and are extremely good. <laughs> milkshakes are good. They're extremely good. <laughs> and when you put a fry in it, it's even better, which is what it says on the caption there. Uh, yeah, that's like going, again... I've said it already in this video. You're going to an addict's house and you're bringing, bringing the drug. You just don't do that. Do you care for them at all? Do you care about what they're going through and, and the pain of trying to lose weight and the just immense 
self-control you need to do it? I mean, I really commend Vanessa here for going after her sister. It's even better. I see that <laughs> makes me want to relapse. Exactly. It makes you want to relapse. It, it makes you want to give back in. Because if you have somebody in your life saying, it's just, it's just a milkshake, it's just some fries, and if you dip your fries in your milkshake, it's even better, it's good, it's, it, it's okay to have that. Like, that's all it takes is that one person in your life. That's why I was so frustrated last night about the ice cream. It's like all it takes is that one little push in your mind because you're struggling and fighting so hard to overcome those thoughts and those temptations. And you're like, come on, offer me a little more support here. Don't tell me it's okay to have that little bit of ice cream because it's not. Because that sends me into a frenzy and then I'm having a bowl of it. And then before I know it, it's like, oh, well, maybe I could have ice cream every night. Because I had a little bit last night and it didn't stall me out. So, hey, maybe I should have some more every night. And then every night turns into, oh, well, now my weight loss is stalled because I've been, you know, eating healthy all day long and losing a bunch of weight, but then all of a sudden I'm bombarding my system with sugar. It's not healthy. The reason I had to leave your house is because the enabling. Vanessa, this is called normal food. This is what normal people eat. Let me say this. It shouldn't be. Like, isn't that the big problem with society, that that's what normal people eat? That's a normal diet for Americans today. The burgers the fries, the milkshakes, that shouldn't be normal anymore. Like, we've normalized that. That's an everyday thing. You come home from work, you grab some McDonald's, you grab some Burger King or some Taco Bell, you go to the drive through and that's why kids are becoming so obese today is because that's how parents deal with eating. It's a normal part of society now. And it's absolutely disgusting, and it's killing people. Kids are getting obese at much, much younger rates, and they're having more issues with obesity, like heart attacks and strokes at younger ages, because they've been obese for so long. That shouldn't be a normal diet anymore. We should normalize eating healthy and eating clean. This, when you come over, don't bring not a damn thing, or water, fruit, vegetables. I mean, Vanessa's like the food police now. Like, you know, I get it. You look good. You're doing what you're doing. But, you know, you don't have to arrest me every time I come over here. Yeah, she does. You're acting like an old junkie yourself. Like, you're addicted to those foods. And you're going to bring them over to your former addict sister's house? She does have to be tough. She does have to put the foot down. That's the only way she's going to get herself and her son clean. That's the only way, is by being the food police. You could call her that all you want to, sister. But she has to do that to save her family's life. You don't realize the damage that you're doing from your enabling by bringing over food and offering, it, offering the, the son the milkshake. You don't realize it. It's not just her being a stickler and trying to cast you off or something like that. But you probably have your own emotional connection to the family and, and food. But you, you just happen to be skinny. For something. Well, you don't have to be angry at me. I mean, you know, I'm just I'm trying hurt. to, you I'm know. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm hurt about it because to see me go through what I've went through and then you're still bringing stuff like that to my home. Exactly. It, just like last night, I was frustrated. I was a little hurt. Because I just explained to my mom that I need to do this. Again, I'm not blaming my mom. It was a mindless thing for her. Just like it was probably a mindless thing for her. Like, hey, I've been bringing this kind of food over to your house or around you your entire life. And now that she's changing her, her life, she's getting healthy. It's like it's hard for other people to realize that. Because people do, still do offer me bad food. They offer me candy and desserts and stuff like that. And... You know, it's very easy for me to say, yeah, let's indulge, but I've had the willpower to say no. And so it's, you're not just changing yourself, you're changing the connection you have with everybody else around you who are used to you eating a certain way.
and there's nostalgia and traditions and hey you know we used to go and do this on this day and you know we used to go to this restaurant and, and eat out and hey we have a family tradition of doing this and you know it, it's just it becomes ingrained in your life to consistently eat bad and to use food as celebration or partying or whatever and so yeah it, you're not just breaking yourself you're breaking everybody else who you enjoyed that with it's like if you had a group of friends who used to do drugs together in high school and then you get clean and they're all still partying and it's like okay what do i do do i break off from my friends do i go my own way here because now i'm clean and they're continuing to use like I almost killed myself and overdosed on, on this drug and they're all still using. So what do I do here? So yeah, she definitely has to be the food police. She has to tell her sister, listen, I'm hurt because you know the struggle I went through. You know the fighting that I do every single day. How dare you bring that stuff into my house? It's hurtful. Wow. Jacob's gained over 30 pounds in the last eight months. I mean, that's not as bad as, as we've seen some people on, on these types of shows where they've gained 30 pounds in a month. I've seen 50 pounds. I've seen 160 pounds in like one or two months. Like, that's a ridiculous amount of weight gain. So 30 pounds in the last eight months, it's probably a little slower because he's a younger guy. He's a bigger guy. He's taller. So, But still, 30 pounds is a lot to gain. And he's on the wrong path because in the next year that could be easily a hundred pounds gained and now i understand why jacob gained the weight now what i've got to do as a mother i'm going to take charge making him a doctor's appointment putting a stop to this putting an end to this right now and yeah she's definitely not going to allow enabling in her house she's putting her foot down and that's exactly what she needs to do to save her son's life Anything short of that is child abuse, in my opinion. And you might disagree with me on that. But if you're allowing your son to be enabled, I don't know how old he is. If he's like 18 plus, then, you know, it's not child abuse. But, yeah, you, you seriously need to do something to save your son's life and do it right now. And Jack, you need to understand, this is my house my rules you will not disrespect me or my child in my house i don't care who you are she keeps this up and i'm gonna get a rottweiler and post it out front <laughs> that was a clip it was a quick one um i actually saw this clip the other night when this episode aired and i thought oh well that'd be a good one to react to um but yeah this is a good way of people who don't understand what enabling is like for you to see what we go through so not only do we have to battle our own self-control we have to have our own discipline but it's the people around us who make it easier to indulge because they don't understand that emotional connection to food we have to them it's just it, it's nothing they're skinny they don't have a food addiction so they're used to eating whatever they want to eat and so when they come around you, they're still sort of expecting that same connection, that same bond that was there before. And that bond could have been food, that, that bond could have been any other thing, but it's very hard as a person who's trying to get their lifestyle right and overcome a food addiction to live in the same world as everybody else when everybody else is going out to eat all the time, getting fast food all the time, ordering pizza all the time. It's really, really hard to overcome that. And all it takes is a small suggestion like, oh, a milkshake isn't a big deal. Come on, it's just a, a little milkshake. It's just a couple of fries. This is not a big deal. Why are you being the food police? Oh, a little bit of ice cream, a bite of ice cream isn't a, isn't a problem. Go ahead. It's like, I really want to, and you're enabling me. You're giving me excuse to do it, but you can't do it. You just can't. Anyways, that's my video for tonight. Again, please do me a huge favor. Not tonight, this morning. It's morning time. <laughs> please hit the subscribe button down below. Please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this clip and enabling. Maybe you have your own enabling story. Leave it down below. Um, we have a Discord channel that you can join down in my about section. There's a link to it. There's a link to my Facebook page. There's a link to my PayPal. So if you're looking to financially support our channel, 
we greatly appreciate it. Send me recipe ideas, send me video requests that you want me to react to. Just plop the YouTube link in the email, send it to me, bigtbariatric at gmail.com, all one word. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Have a great one. God bless you. See you next time.